buddy Brian here at quantlabs.net. Uh, today is September 15th, 2024. Um, just to put out a full warning for people, um, I will be getting geek on now, getting the nerd talk from here on. Um, I have found and I've tested a final test. People are not interested in my trading analysis. People are not interested in my trading results. People are not interested in any of that. They're only interested in learning about high frequency trading, C++ and how to get there. So as you know, coming back um, in October uh, 7th or so, 2024, I'll be quickly ramping up C++ and learning both um, the options in futures trading. Uh, there's an open source course on that. This will become a paid membership annual uh, I'll talk about that after what I'm going to show you. First here, I want to talk about the tools that I'm intending to use. Uh, it doesn't have to be final leading into the first week of October. Um, if you got better methods and databases and uh, other approaches in custom Linux or what I'll show you is BSD, um, more like a Unix. Um, so if you got any opinions here to improve this situation, with uh, whatnot, let me know via the comments below. So the first thing we'll be focusing on as it stands right now is Redis. I've been eyeing Redis, the database, in-memory database for many years. It, and um, it's gone sort of commercial, but the core of it's still available. So if you come here into Redis IO, Redis.io, come under products here you have source code available which is really the key to the addition um, the details of instructions are fairly good um, so here's what we can use redis for in memory data store or um, you can build a vector database a cache a document database this is what I'm more interested in is a streaming engine and a message broker using a publisher subscriber pattern um, there's many approaches to it. It's, in, as I said, in-memory queuing. It does have sharding available uh, as well, which is key to uh, next to low latency. It's not low latency. Low latency is using C++ libraries like 0MQ and anything above that. Um, I have talked to various people on the different types of solutions out there but um, as I said if anyone's got a better solution let me know this is the time to do it before we start building out things um, in the next couple of months and as I said there's going to be a lot of nerd talk here on this channel moving forward because that's what people want so you have to obviously as when you have a growing YouTube channel you have to provide what people want so here's the interesting thing about Redis it supports data types Strings, hashes, lists, uh, sets, sorted sets, and JSON with atomic operations as well. Okay, so um, there's different uses. The vector database will be very useful when it comes to machine learning. Um, I haven't really um, looked into machine learning and AI related. I want to just lay down the foundation first. I've said this before in a past video, I do believe machine learning and AI is going to be an important element of automated trading, low latency as well as high frequency trading as well. There's no doubt about it. And it will get a lot more intelligent and will be more self-adapting as well. So for me, it's not on my timeline right now. Probably later well into 2025, I'll be looking at uh, that sort of technology and that's also including the agents as well, because the agents is what makes the human traders like uh, operations of um, a system when it comes to high frequency trading. And of course, uh, there's a lot of other things here with the retrieval augmented generation with uh, Redis as well. That's a hot thing right now as well. So the types of applications you can use. Um, so when you look at Redis, it has some excellent uh, client libraries, specifically in Python and C++. The uh, database itself, the engine, is written in C. So here you also have the uh, libraries as well. 
this is why I like using Redis because it's very, it's open source. There's obviously more commercial products like the Redis Cloud and the Redis software, which is much more um, uh, commercialized, but it depends on your licensing and how big you want it and so on and so forth. For me, it's a good data store. And as I said, this is not the final, but um, once you start to use and get well into using something like Redis, that becomes the established tool you use for data and messaging and probably use it as a data store from within uh, AI machine learning down the road. So it'll be hard to sh uh, move off of once it's already established and code is developed using that. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. If you got a better method, now is the time to talk about it. Um, we get people from a video 10 years ago, eight years ago saying, well, you shouldn't use this eight years later. So uh, over the next week or so, a couple of weeks, now is the time to suggest something better before we start establishing Redis as the answer to all of this as well. Um, so that's number one. And uh, as I said, the source code is available right here on the usual uh, GitHub. So here this, this database or engine is written in C. So C is something you need to learn. One thing I like about Redis as well, it's not talked about as a language a lot, but you can use a language like Lua and you can build in internal scripts within um, Redis so you can optimize your, your searching and optimi uh, optimize your um, searching, streaming, using Lua because it has its own little uh, SDK as well. And, and a lot of uh, over the years, over that last 10 plus years, what I've seen is a lot of people trying to build out uh, HFT operations. Um, Redis is usually the closest database that's mentioned um, and always benchmarked against for its speed because it's very quick. So again, what I love about Redis is the um, the uh, just the transparency with it. It's op true open source, I shouldn't say true open source, but the community edition is as well. And you can leverage off that as well. Um, you can see there's still some development going on six months, six months, two weeks ago. So there are some updates still happening to Redis, the community edition. Usually when it comes to now that Redis is more of a freemium model, you know, obviously the, co the commercial uh, solutions are gonna be more expensive solutions as well. I wouldn't be surprised that Redis Labs is now um, running this uh, and sponsoring this as well. Let me just get rid of these notifications as well. Okay, so um, there is that. Okay, so um, let me just go back to the Redis site. So let's see who's sponsoring all this. So I'm not sure if Redis Labs are the one uh, running this now. I haven't really looked at Redis for a while, um, but uh, it's an interesting database and something to use for true HFT. Here's the thing, you can write your own solution, but that could take years in itself, and I don't think time is a luxury to get as close as to HFT and ultra low latency and all that, but it's, the resources are just not there to be able to do that. When you look at the um, large, larger, multi-billion, even multi-million dollar operations with high frequency shops, the banks and the hedge funds and all that, they're gonna have uh, an entire team dedicated to writing out uh, databases. Um, so this is the closest we get with with that. Okay, so that's one uh, set of tools I'm looking at. The other is, um, let me just see here, this one, uh, OpenBSD. So if you look at at um, Redis, and you look at uh, what operating system Redis runs off of, you can see the usual Linux. Um, so this is this operating system is not it, it, okay. There's Unix, and then there's Linux. So Linux spun out of the early days in the early '80s, '90s into Linux with uh, Linus uh, Torvalds developing Linux. So Linux came out of that. So it's not a true clone of Unix. So Unix with the OpenBSD um, is uh, something to more consider. It's not a true Linux and then there's less 
less processing in the background when it comes to BSD. Again, everybody can have their own opinion. Comments are very welcome on it, um, on the Linux versus BSD argument. Um, one thing when it comes to HFT and using a custom OS, typically you'll want one that has the least amount of jitter, jitter, jitteriness, jitterness within the operating system. Linux, there can be quite a bit unless you're building right from a kernel and building out your own um, customized kernel uh, and then building your infrastructure on top of that. And that's what probably a lot of high frequency trading shops use. They will never talk about it, I don't think, but I wouldn't be surprised they'll be building out their own uh, Linux version built off of um, the kernel in Linux. So there is that to consider. Um, and uh, let's move over to BSD now. Now, if you know the history of BSD, this is where Mac OS comes from. The Apple Mac operating system is built off of open BSD. Um, so every version you have of BSD will be built off this. So here um, we've got uh, all the available um, source code again. Uh, let me just see here. I know I had it here. Um, yeah, right here. So open BSD is maintained, fully open source. And again, it's written in C and this is the sole person uh, maintaining it. Um, and just so you know that. With OpenBSD, it's a different type of operating system. I believe it's probably the most secure operating system out there. With BSD, um, which is Berkeley Software Distribution, um, which came out of obviously Berkeley, uh, and then they developed, uh, I'm not sure, there's OpenBSD, uh, FreeBSD, but OpenBSD is fairly secure. Uh, it's a more complex data uh, or operating system because you have to, all the ports are by default closed off. So you have to um, manually go in and configure each port, each feature you want to turn on. And that's why OpenBSD is fairly secure because all the um, features and ports and all that are closed by default. So that's what makes it secure. So it's a little, it's a much more complex operating system to work up. <laughs> But again, you can see it's true, true open source. So that's why I'm looking at using, uh, there's NetBSD, I think there's NetBSD, there's NomadBSD, there's FreeBSD. And again, uh, that may change because again, it depends upon, um, you can always build from source on your operating system. So you can do that with um, the BSD. Now there's another qu a concern about what C++ compiler to use. Typically the GCC should be fine. If you want to do some of the, the more customization, you would have to probably use MS, uh, Microsoft Virtual C compiler. Uh, if you want to do NVIDIA and, and, and work with the NVIDIA AI uh, board sets, GPU, you have to use the NVIDIA compiler. There's Intel as well. So there's separate C compilers as well. But between all of this, I think if you start working with the new compiler, uh, GCC should be fine. And again, same thing with the C as well, but you will get points in your compiling that can break or in the linking as well. So again, as I said, if you wanna know more about this and join the journey as we move towards this, a couple things you need to know about. Go to quantlabsnet.com. Okay, so I'm, this is where I'm gonna start talking about my intention. These are some of the tools I'm using. If you think you got better tools, better options, let me know via the comments. Let me know via, if you're on my email list watching this, get in touch with me by responding. How to get onto the email list. Um, you want to make sure that you opt in. And uh, as a bonus, I'll give you this fairly new C++ HFT book. Um, just going through all the different um, new concepts a lot of uh, shops, uh, HFT shops are using. We talk about C++. All the different concepts to build out an HFT system. Uh, again, these are not bots. These are systems end-to-end -end complete on, as I've shown you, using something like Redis, maybe could be home-built, 
um, and on top of your uh, Linux operating or BSD operating system as I'll show. But anyways, you get um, opted in here, you'll get put into my email list. Um, one of the things that you'll need to follow now, as I mentioned before, many people don't really care about my trading analysis. People don't care about my trading results, which I'm okay with. Um, as it stands, people are interested in this, the technology to build out an HFT system or close to it as you can get in a true sense of what the um, firms are using on top of knowing this type of technology will help you get a career as well. So with that, um, let me just go back to the top here. Um, the other big thing that will be changing around is right here, the Quant Leap Programming Group. This will be an annual membership that I'll be using come coming uh, October. I will not be talking a lot about the trading uh, techniques or let's say trading analysis. I already have that in place using Python. That's been in place for about two, three years now. It's been working. What we're doing here now is we're doing at the low level, at the high frequency set of data to, to, to figure out using options and, and, and futures and being able to optimize and seeing the opportunities there. And it's not very complicated. It's just using simple supply and uh, demand techniques along with obviously the black jewels as well, which helps. So that's what the group's gonna focus on. This right here is the current price. It's in US dollars. This will shift over to British pounds, which will at the current rate, con current conversion rate will add on another 30% increase. So if you wanna join this, this is the rate you'll be set at and US dollars, and that's for a year, and I'll include everything else. I'm not gonna probably even market any of this stuff because now we're moving into serious times now to be a technical guru, the C++, the Python, little bit of trading view as well which helps and even another trading platform but this is going to be the core and the future of moving forward what i'll be focusing on using uh again current in us dollar and adding on another 30 percent increase when i switch everything over to british pound that will be at an annual rate as well okay and i have confirmed with the hosting company that hosts this once you're locked into this you pay that every year, it does not go up. I anticipate this will go up quite a lot in the next year because the value it will bring and the people that will be brought into this exclusive behind a paywall group, okay? So that's the other key there to understand about the tools that we're using. We can always shift it to what works better, but from my experience over the last 10 years with Redis and something like OpenBSD are the two core technologies to build the infrastructure and then build out the custom C++ from that as well. If you got any questions about the future of it, put it again in the comments, put it, uh, just send me an email, I'll get back to you on that. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, have a good day.